I grew up in central London. In, until I was 10, I lived in an area called Spitalfield, which is incredibly materially rich. And I guess from a young age, I was very used to noticing what I was surrounded by day to day, whether that be the architecture, the, the materials of saris, um, anything and everything. And my dad is an architect, and I think that had quite a big impact on the things that I was sort of sensitive to and that I was always curious about relationships that different type of materials can have with each other, whether that be in buildings or clothing or anything really. Uh, the grain of a stone next to the grain of a wood or the juxtapositions of hard against soft. All of these different elements which really carry through to my work now. Um, when I was a teenager, up until my foundation year, I, I was very much into photography. And I used to love being in the dark room, developing all my own photos, alongside painting. When I was going to do my BA, after I finished my foundation at St Martin's, I almost did a photography degree. The tipping point was just that it felt too restrictive and I'm so glad now that I made that decision because as I've got older I've realised that although I still love photography, painting is my antidote to the world that we live in now which is so saturated by computers and digital imagery and the internet and I'm quite old-fashioned and I, I tend to push that away slightly and I, I'm obsessed with my art books. I love seeing things either in a gallery or a book. I don't like always looking at a screen and I find that I really need that connection with the actual making process of my painting in order to really feed my creativity. So when I started my BA in Leicester, I had a really big studio space and that's when I started to really scale up my work and found a freedom in making large scale paintings which is something obviously that I still love now. So my tutors that I had at St Martin's for my masters um, were two amazing um, painters, artists called Clem Crosby and Alex Landrum and when I arrived I was quite stuck on just making paintings on these very large stretches and basically just thinking about the painting as a the canvas as a surface rather than something that I could really start working with as a material in itself. It wasn't just something that was there and you add something directly to it. Still to this day most of my paintings are all made on the floor and I basically sit on them, move around on them. It's a very pr physical process and um, I become immersed in the materials and the paint and I use the canvas almost as a, a sponge. I soak it, I wash it, I travel a lot with my paintings before they're ever finished paintings. I take them home with me on the bus from the studio, put them in the washing machine, dry them in my kitchen, bring them back, rip them up, put them back together again. And often pieces of canvas that I've made a year or so ago that I've discarded they'll then re-enter into a painting like months and months afterwards. And it's all this history that goes into each painting and each bit of material that I love. And I started to take this a bit further last year and I sourced some like 80, 90 year old bags from the villages that I've been going to since I was very small in Norfolk and basically giving them a whole new life. It's added to my sense of the history of my paintings because most people looking at my work, unless I'm talking to you and explaining, you wouldn't know what's gone on to those pieces of material before they've actually entered into a painting. I find a material much more interesting that it's had these previous lives and I suppose that's something that I'm exploring with my works. I think another reason why I became so um, interested and connected with um, the process of making and the materials themselves is that I travelled a lot through um, Asia, India, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Vietnam and all of these countries, obviously they live um, in a way which is very different to how we live here. 
they use materials a lot more in a precious and special way. It's not just a throwaway piece of clothing that you're going to wear for two months and then get rid of. It's how, how, how much importance we put on um, soft, soft materials rather than in big cities. The focus is all on these high buildings or these, you know, everything quite hard and industrial. And I think the antidote as well to living in London sometimes is being able to come into the studio and work with all of these soft materials. Mainly I work with linen, canvas, cotton. And that's something that has always been a base for my practice, I guess. Um, the malleability of these materials and the process of transformation that I can impose on the materials. From secondary school, loving abstract expressionist artists like Rothko and Clifford Still and Joan Mitchell. And then as I sort of have evolved with my own making and my interests in different types of art, my favourite painter and uh, artist in general is uh, Robert Rauschenberg and his ability to work in so many different ways and he, he just draws me in to how he's been thinking or the, what, the different ways that his mind goes and that he never, st he never stood still, he never became stagnant and he continued throughout his life to try and experiment and kept changing and um, that's something that I love in an artist. Eva Hess for her sensibilities to material and process. David Hammonds, who I was looking at a lot during my MA for his uh, unstretched and heaped upon paintings, using a lot of reclaimed uh, materials and found materials. And his choice and use of materials both resonate with me quite a lot because a lot of people going into a gallery would just see what they see, but without knowing the story behind each painting and what's gone into it, why certain things have been chosen. Once you start learning about that, the story of each work starts to unravel. And I love that aspect of his work. Another person is uh, Lee Krasner, especially her collages. I think they're absolutely amazing. And I would also say another current artist that I that I look at quite a lot is Sterling Ruby. And obviously he has been taking the material process-based painting to, to another level recently. So yeah, he's great. So my process and the way that I work in the studio is very experimental. Sometimes I choose an element because it has a great relationship with another, for example, the male and female qualities that sewing has versus using staples or a dark gritty grey. These, these things start talking to each other within a painting and that male and female aspect is something that I like to explore within my work and hence when I'm using the bodily uh, fleshy pinks against the greys or the blacks it's this, I guess it's really the story of what I'm living in every day is that I'm in this really hard-edged part of London that is basically concrete. It's quite, I walk out my door and I have this real, you know, sense of slight, slight roughness. And then coming into my studio, I like it to be, I like it to be rigorous, but I also like to feel the softness and the being surrounded, as I mentioned, by all these materials. As I'm walking around the city, whether I'm, I notice lots of things, whether that's graffiti that's been painted over, they're not, they're not painters, but they're going around repainting over stuff that's been um, sort of destroyed or uh, building sites or anything that can be, I'm constantly snapping away and all of these little details, I print off my photos and I have them as source material that I look through day to day that it could just be one small detail, but I'll try to bring that through to a painting or it could be the composition of a couple of buildings and how they slot together on the skyline or all of these things are kind of like just a daily running visual diary for me, but they do feed in um, into the paintings quite a lot. I have had quite a lot of experience of seeing and um, being around slums and shanty towns when I've been traveling in Asia but recently they have actually been 
coming to the street next to where I live and this particular group of homeless people keep building themselves these shelters out of all these materials that they're sourcing from the streets and they will erect one shelter, they'll sleep in it for a couple of nights and then it will be ripped down by the council and then a few days later they will have managed to resourcefully find a whole new range of materials and rebuild it again and this process keeps on happening. This is something that obviously I have witnessed and seen in many other countries but when it's something that I walk past every day on the way to the studio it's very much feeding into uh, issues of uh, sustainability, how people are staying alive from the materials that they can find on the streets and the history of all of those materials, whether it be baby blankets, someone's thrown out their double bed, someone's thrown out a tent that they went to Glastonbury with, all of these things that on one level people have used in a certain way and then just discarded even though they still have a lot of life left in them are then becoming a lifeline for people that don't have a home or a house and then after they're being used by the homeless people they're then being said again by Islington Council you can't stay there you're going back in the rubbish and it's this cycle that I've, I'm watching every day and it's making me think more and more about this process of the history of materials, how we use them, how we find them, and all of the different processes they go through in order to become what they end up as. In my case, paintings, but in a lot of other cases, landfill or a bed for someone to sleep on.